Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Late Show. My first guest tonight is CBS News chief foreign affairs correspondent and moderator of Face the Nation with Margaret Brennan. Please welcome Margaret Brennan. <laughs> Besides being the host of uh, Face the Nation with Margaret Brennan, uh, you are also CBS News chief foreign affairs correspondent, okay? Mm -hmm. And we've got some foreign affairs going on right now over <laughs> in Ukraine. We do indeed. Does anyone have any idea what's going on? Because we were promised that there would be an invasion on February 16th. That was yesterday, and it didn't happen. <laughs> now Biden's saying any day now. What, what's going on? Do you have any sense All from the your guests what's going on? Well, I can tell you on the timeline, all the best intelligence services in the world are trying to nail this down and get inside Vladimir Putin's head. Mm. What they know and what Western intelligence services knew was that they were told to go by the 16th to be ready for an invasion. That's okay. what the military was told. Right. But now, according to my sources, within the next four to five days is when they may start the second half of what appears to be a military attack that may already be underway. Right. Well, what do you mean, might already be underway? Wouldn't we know if it was already underway because we would see the attack? If you think of this in terms of 1941, tanks rolling across the border, that is unmistakable. Absolutely, yes. But in terms of what the Biden administration is describing is sort of this phase one of cyber attacks, of disinformation, of staging an incident in the eastern part of the country. And today you heard that from Secretary Blinken at the United Nations lay out what they are looking for in terms of a predicate for an invasion. It could be a chemical weapons attack. It could be a false terrorist attack as in an actual attack, but staged by the Russians against their own people. Something that would allow for Vladimir Putin to say, I have no choice. I have to act. He's and by his own people, do they mean people inside of Russia yes. or uh, ethnically Russian people, Russian speakers in Donbass and eastern Ukraine? Both scenarios were laid out by the Secretary of State okay. today. Um, and so in the Donbass area, which is the southeastern part of Ukraine, there's been a fighting there for the past eight years. Because remember, Vladimir Putin back in 2014 did go in and seize territory. He has already done this. He has taken Crimea. He has had these areas in the southeast, in the Donbass, where And this is not a cold war. Like 14,000 people or something have died no, in this fight war. so far. Actual fighting, absolutely. Um, and in these breakaway republics, uh, that is where the world is focused right now. Because you did have some shelling today, uh, kindergarten, you probably also the images of that. A drumbeat is building, something that would allow for the justification uh, by Vladimir Putin to do something. And there's a sliver of a chance of diplomacy, and the world is grabbing at it, trying to talk him out of it. Um, so uh, uh, Putin, and I think maybe Lavrov, his, his foreign, foreign minister, minister, have said, no, we're pulling out. Or, like, they've allowed cameras in while Lavrov is reporting to Putin about, like, oh, these troops are going back to their barracks or whatever. Right. This, this implication that they're pulling back from the front. But we have satellite imagery of them actually going. Bridges being built across rivers that yes. tanks can go across. For whom is this information? Is it for their own domestic consumption? Because they have to know that we have satellites. They invented them. <laughs> satellites, intercepts. I mean, more than 60% of the, the Russian army is on high alert, poised at Ukraine's border. They have moved in field hospitals and blood supplies. So those are the kind of indicators that say, maybe this isn't just an exercise. And by the way, Sunday, the 20th, is the date that those exercises are scheduled to end. So that's a hard date on the calendar to sort of test the premise of whether Vladimir Putin's claim that this is all just an exercise um, is for real. But it definitely, for all the people I talk to in the intelligence world, um, say this is only building, this is only escalating. And the fear here, and the reason that this is such a focal point is that it's not just a story about Ukraine, although obviously any loss of life there, I mean, the estimates are you could have up to 100,000 dead um, and casualties. The fear is it doesn't stop there, that this is a test of wills and a test of whether the West really will this time say to Vladimir Putin, no, you can't go any further. Because in 2014, he tested the world and 
uh, then Vice President Biden and President Obama sanctioned him, and it obviously didn't dissuade him from trying again. We have to take a quick break, but when we come back, I will ask Margaret about Ukraine and the possibility of joining NATO. Stick around. Mm -hmm.